It's the biggest change in British armed policing in a generation. We've been given unprecedented access to the new recruits. On me, closed or right, split. The ones who could be first in, facing the terrorists. They are armed and carrying big responsibility. The marauding gunman that struck in Mumbai back in 2008 changed the thinking of UK police forces. First Paris attacks saw roaming gunmen in the heart of Europe. But it was the simultaneous strikes in November that changed everything. <laughs> scene after scene of mass murder. We now live in a constant state of alert. Across Europe, we've seen cities in lockdown and more weapons on the streets to both deter and protect. In the UK, the response in part is this. The biggest surge in armed officers that UK police forces have ever known. And when I looked at that, I just kind of thought, I hope I never have to deal with that. But I also thought straight away, I've got to prepare in case that ever happens. And that's what we've been doing literally from the Monday afterwards. We, we started planning and preparing then. It seems to be getting closer and closer. And it used to be all what if. I think now people are when. We know there is a determination to attack in the West from Daesh. And actually, uh, the decision after Paris really was that that was a game-changing moment and it was right to take a sort of more assertive posture about how we position firearms in placing. Keep these fingers off the trigger! When, when the call went it. out after Paris, these are the men and women who put up their hands. Experienced, unarmed officers who want to join the West Midlands Police Firearms Unit. The course is gruelling and takes months to get through. Take your time. Alicia is normally a detective sergeant. This is day one with the carbine gun. A compact, semi-automatic rifle. It's not easy, Alicia. No, well, I'm going I'm left-handed usually. Yeah. Um, so they've asked me to try and shoot right-handed as well, so it, the mechanics are a little bit alien to me, so I'm just trying to to get used to that as well. You know, you do have press coverage as soon as an officer shoots somebody. Everybody starts to look for a reason to point the finger at the officer and find fault with the decision. And that, for me, that was more of a thought. Um, you know, something to really sit down and think about. Could I deal with that? The number of shots actually fired for real by all armed officers in a whole year is usually in single figures. Each one, though, loaded with implications. And you ask them outright, don't you? You make it clear at many, many stages along the way what they're taking on. Absolutely. And on day one of the SLP course, I'll actually ask them the question, you know, could you take somebody's life? Could you deal with it emotionally? Could your family deal with it emotionally? Um, and obviously that is constantly in the forefront of their minds as they progress through the training. The number of armed police had actually been falling. Now, to meet the perceived threat, 1,500 extra officers are retraining across England and Wales. Andy is also one of them, 20 years in the force and ready for something different. His accuracy improving all the time. You seem more confident with it now. I'm more confident with the weapon, um, and that's just because the drills have done again and again and again. So it's, it, is, it is practice. Every time you stand there, it's still a daunting experience. Like every student here, Adette has thought long and hard about what she's taking on. I have no knowledge of guns before I came. Yeah. So I found that the working parts with it, when they explain what they're doing, what they adjust and why, it all makes sense and then your shooting just gets better. When you actually feel you've got control, you can shoot then the reality kicks in a little bit more. The training is really, really difficult, and it should be. Um, if for any second, for me, for any second, I didn't feel it was the right path for me, I'd also pull out of the process. 
Watch and react. Watch and react. But all the extra pressure, the extra responsibility, and of course the potential consequences. There's not actually anything extra in their pay packet. Not the officers in training here, or indeed their colleagues who are already qualified out on the streets of the West Midlands. They are here as volunteers. If they make it through every stage of the course, they could be picking up their weapons for real at the police armory. Go out and put some check. Here, each officer is assigned their own weapons. It's down to them to confirm that they and their firearms are ready for a shift. Armed police patrols are often first in. Officers like Rob and Alex. I would just have a quick word to make sure we uh, can stop something developing. So. And it can be anything from a drunken argument Laila, come on. Thank you. Take care. right through to international terrorism. I don't want an attack to happen by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I don't think I, I don't think I would have the right moral character to be a police officer if at the first sign of danger I, I turned away and you know handed him a badge or said I'm not doing this, you know, I'll go and work in an office. Or your friends and family, you know, being aware of what's happening in the world. You know, they are concerned, but, you know, we're, we're well equipped, well trained. You know, we're in a, a better position than most to deal with that, you know, that, that threat, should it, if and when it does arise. It would be a completely different ball game, I think, in a, in a terrorist type attack to uh, perhaps a regular firearms incident. Um, the threat level is obviously going to be much, much higher. I think the people that potentially would be going up against their mindset is, is totally different to that of an armed robber. I would suggest, I don't know what you think, Al, but you know, they're playing a very, very different game to a different set of rules. Because of that, the orders have changed. This exercise in London last year showed what it might look like. Here, it's drilled into them. Even for qualified firearms officers, the training is refreshed again and again. There are many different scenarios that they train for, of which a marauding terrorist firearms incident is just one. And for that reason, we can't show you everything that they are doing. We can't film absolutely every tactic, and that is quite understandable. But the reality is that most of these officers will be dealing far more with incidents, perhaps, of domestic violence, for example. Okay, clear, near left John their job is to tackle all kinds of violent offenders. But if they did come face to face with a gunman firing indiscriminately, their instruction is to shoot that individual as an absolute priority. You have to make the decision that, that is going to be um, the one that saves the lives. And you know, it might mean that momentarily you're, you are leaving people injured, possibly dying people calling for help. If I don't step over, and if I don't walk past, and if I don't continue, then I am a greater target, as are more of my colleagues and more of the public. I would be armed and be able to take that, predominantly take that person, take the shot if need be, and, and stop them. It's very definitely the sharp end of policing, isn't it? And uh, it makes you realise just how serious things can get. Stephen Cragg is a top human rights barrister who's worked on many cases where police forces have got it wrong. I had so many clients who suffered from post-traumatic stress as a result of um, you know, police raiding wrong houses. It's very hard to discern any uh, way in which the police have decided they need twice as many armed police officers at the moment. Uh, one of the problems is that there's no national record uh, kept uh, by the police on use of force um, and so there's nothing for them to base the increase on. The temptation must be for the police to, to use firearms off officers on more occasions um, and um, there's a risk that um, they'll be used in situations where they're not now and probably don't need to be. The face of the picks up the new. The Home Office is funding this increase in numbers and equipment. It's happening in urban police forces across the UK. 
it's a rubbish around. We've doubled our, doubled our response, our farms response at key times and at key locations. And we're working towards to having that 24-7 all over the West Mint. So, yeah, if we had something happen, and, and I hope it doesn't, I think we're in a re re really strong position to deal with it quickly and effectively. If I was at New Street Station or at the Boring Shopping Centre, how close are your offices? There, there'll, be, there'll be a vehicle within a quarter of a mile. There'll be a vehicle within a couple of minutes of response time, I can confidently say that. We constantly move our vehicles around. We change uh, on intelligence every day where we, where we uh, deploy them, but as effectively as possible to the threat of time. But our key places where there is crowded places, a lot of people around, you're talking minutes at any time, 24-7. West Midlands Police haven't had any fatal shootings in the past 20 years. But across England and Wales since 2004, 24 people have been shot dead by police officers. I am really committed that British policing has to and should remain an unarmed service. It's vitally important because it's the style of policing we've got. Terrorism shouldn't change that. It's vital we build good links with the community and being armed would, I think, interfere with that. And it enables me, actually, to pick only the absolute best officers to be trained in the use of firearms. Some students won't make the cut, but for most, the people in their sights will soon be real. Almost always, they will diffuse situations through simply talking, but being ready for the worst-case scenarios is now more relevant than ever. The threat is there on every shift.